We begin each journey with a question. We teach for students to better understand the world, but how do we get our students to care when they don't even listen to each other? What about the girl in the back who never speaks up, but who writes about the resentment she feels that no one tries to understand her, not even her teachers? What about the boy who rolls his eyes whenever someone else offers an opinion? Or his friend who follows his lead? How, How do, do we, we find, find a way for each voice in the room to be heard? For the past decade, we have taught high school English in Michigan's rural Upper Peninsula. Our involvement with the National Writing Project has opened many doors. One of those opportunities came in the form of a once-in-a-lifetime chance to visit New York City to participate in Holocaust inquiry. While there, we examined our own identities and learned that the initial step in responding to others is first to understand ourselves. As teachers, we have to nurture a dynamic that allows the girl in the back to break her silence and the boy and his friend to put themselves in her shoes and feel compassion. We were riveted by the testimonies of the Holocaust survivors that we met. Their stories became a part of us and we felt responsible to bear witness. We were changed. We couldn't be the same. If we could replicate those experiences for our students, perhaps we could move forward together to that deeper place of empathy. Students need to know they have a voice, that there is meaning to life, and that their own lives will be much fuller if they are not indifferent to the world around them. They need the faith to act when they see prejudice in the halls or when they hear of suffering on the news. They can choose not to be bystanders but rather to use their voices. The problem of intolerance runs deep. The discussion needed to reach all members of our community. How could our faculty, our administration, and our students' families engage in lessons learned from the Holocaust? By becoming, becoming witness, witness to a survivor. survivor. We invited Inga Auerbacher to become our special guest. Her book, I Am A Star, tells of how her childhood in a German village was ruptured when she and her family were transported to the Terrorism concentration camp in Czechoslovakia. Because she was Jewish, she was forced to identify herself by wearing the yellow star of David. Of 15,000 children imprisoned at Terrorism, only 100 survived. Now a retired chemist and author living in New York City, Inga speaks to groups around the world. Inga was clear that she wanted to reach as many students as possible. In addition to student assemblies, a meet and greet potluck and program for the entire community were planned. Inga would speak on May 8th, her liberation date, which she now celebrates as her second birthday. Our fellow writing project teachers reinforced to us how important networks of support can be when trying to accomplish a feat such as the STAR project. We reached out to them and they helped us delegate and make the project more manageable by taking leadership roles. Showcased at the event were exhibits created by students from a number of different classes. The students interpreted community to also mean the environment and used an earth-friendly product to generate funds. They also, after hearing stories of hunger in the camps, initiated a way to help the less fortunate in our community. A group of secretaries jumped in and wanted to help welcome Inga. We were contacted by the PTO, and a local senior citizen group. Talents emerged from around the district. We tapped into the ingenuity of our CAD teacher. The journalism students created a special edition newspaper. Each, Each voice was represented. represented. Identity was shared through family recipes and a cookbook was compiled. The students wanted to make sure Inga knew that they valued her story. They honored her with music, poetry, and artwork that was inspired by the camp where Inga was forced to spend her childhood. In three short days, Inga became our friend. We became witness to her story and are now responsible to relate her testimony to others. While we can reflect on so many defining moments that Inga brought into our lives, the one that truly stands out is the moment her speech drew to a close. Inga stood before us with her passionate message to remember that we are all stars and that we have the power to make a difference. The clock read 8.50, the exact time 65 years ago that her family was liberated. The crowd cheered and broke into a chorus of happy birthday. 
Inga stood tall and proud, and again we were changed. We know we have a long way to go to answer our initial question. How, How do, do we, we find, find a way for each voice to be heard? The STAR Project is ongoing. Inga's spunky personality, message of resilience, and capacity to love continue to light the way. Yeah.